Hi guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of our big baby buys. If you're new here, my name is Barbie and I film pregnancy and lifestyle related videos. I'd love for you to subscribe down below and make sure you also hit the bell button so that you're notified every time I post a new video. So yeah, as I mentioned, this is kind of a haul of our big ticket items, the things that I felt we spent a lot of money on and which we kind of researched a bit more than everything else. So to start, I'm going to talk about the kind of sleep department. And one thing which so many people told us to buy was the sleepy head. So for those of you who don't know, this is the sleepy head. It is basically a kind of mattress slash sleeping pod. I think the way it works is that it's got this big kind of foam padding around the side so the babies feel a bit cocooned and a bit more secure when they go to sleep. But I tell you what, oh boy, this thing is expensive. It is like £130 and it is really hard to find in sale. So so in the end we bought ours when we went to the baby show in the XL Centre. That was a couple of months ago and it was £117. We also thought it would be a good idea to get a spare cover for it just in case it gets dirty and we need to change it. Um, they are about 60 to 70 pounds online, which is again, really expensive, but we managed to get a spare cover on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, also just to mention, we did buy a few of these things on Facebook Marketplace. This was ages ago, way before the whole coronavirus stuff happened. We actually started kind of buying stuff around January time. So nothing has been bought during lockdown. But yeah, the, uh, the sleepy head cover we got for 20 pounds, I think it was like 15 or 20 pounds um, and we just bought that from someone local who was selling a spare cover. Also in the sleep department we bought a snooze pod so this is something I'm so 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 excited about just because I can't wait to have baby lying next to me. So there's actually a few different um, next to me type cot options. Um, the other one that we looked at was the Chico next to me cot which also looked lovely. Um, we decided to go with the snooze pod just because we have a very high bed and a high mattress and the snooze pod could go that little bit higher so that it could be level with our bed. Also the snooze pod that we bought kind of just matches really nicely with our bedroom furniture. So we paid £100 for the snooze pod. It's in really good condition. The lady who was selling it said that she ended up co-sleeping with her baby so it had hardly been used. I did actually see some snooze pods selling for a bit cheaper but we did want to buy something that was in quite good condition just because this is our first baby and if we have any other babies we'd like to use everything that we've got again so um, yeah we wanted something that was going to last quite a while and also um, look quite nice so I'm pretty sure to buy the snooze pod new is about £200 you do need a new mattress when you have a new baby so we bought a mattress from Amazon I believe it was just the snooze pod mattress and it was around 30 to 40 pounds so we've got that and we also bought some sheets for it as well for the nursery we decided to go for the Moki mini cot and I believe for the cot, the drawer and the mattress it was around £200. This was something which was very very kindly gifted to us by one of our really good friends. Um, we yeah we really liked this cot, we thought that it was just a nice simple design, it matched really well with the other furniture that we had in the room, it wasn't too expensive. We decided to go for a mini cot instead of an actual cot bed, mainly because the room is quite small so we thought that it would fit nicely in the room and if if we did want to have baby in our bedroom with us for a little bit longer we could probably squeeze it into our bedroom somehow and make it work. Also it's quite lightweight so if we want to dismantle it and put it up in the loft we could do that and it wouldn't be too much of a palaver. The plan is to have the baby napping in the nursery and then hopefully um, having him sleep in there by six months but when I tell people that they just laugh in my face so <laughs> it probably isn't gonna happen and I'll probably just want him in our bed forever um, but yeah let's see how it goes. So another one of our big buys in the nursery was curtains and blinds. It's a very cold room, it's got a big bay window and we thought that if we get blinds and curtains it will hopefully help insulate the room a bit more. So we decided to go for thermal blinds and then blackout curtains <laughs> but unfortunately the room still isn't blacked out with the blackout curtains just because of the way the curtains hang. We also had an absolute nightmare with the blinds because of the bay window and measurements and things like that. So um, I think all in all we spent about £400 and we probably don't do the job that we wanted them to do but they do look very very cute I'll tell you that much. So we got the blinds and the curtains from blinds to go but yeah they definitely do keep the cold out a bit so we're happy with that um, and they do look very very nice so 
yeah, that's one big thing we splurged on in the nursery. So in terms of bouncers and rockers and things like that, I did a lot of research into this. Um, I found bouncers and rockers very stressful. In the end, I decided to get the Baby Bjorn rocker, bouncer, Baby Bjorn bouncer, and I got that again on Facebook Marketplace. Um, again, we spent a little bit more just because we wanted something that was quite good quality. So I think I spent around £70 on this bouncer, um, which is probably quite a lot for a secondhand bouncer, but it is in really good condition. And it also came with the little toy bar, and the toy bar itself is like £25. Um, I think the rocker retails for about 130, 140 pounds. So it wasn't too bad. So the reason I went for the Baby Bjorn is because I had had a lot of recommendations. It seems to be a really, really popular bouncer. Um, I loved how lightweight and portable it is. Um, so I can move it around the flat or take it into the bathroom with me if I need him to be occupied while I'm in the shower. I was also really tempted by the Nuna Leaf, which is basically a chair which rocks side to side. Again, people had told me really good things about it but I just wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was something that we would buy and then the baby wouldn't like, and then we'd just have it sitting, taking up loads of space in our flat. Lastly, in the sleep department, another thing we spent ages researching was baby monitors. So there are a lot of baby monitors out there and it can get very expensive and very confusing. I was quite tempted by the Angel Care monitor, the one that's got a sensory mat. But again, I'd heard like really mixed reviews. Some people said that they loved it. And then some people had said that they hated the sensor pad. It would go off for no reason and it was more hassle than it was worth. So yeah, long story short, in the end, we decided to just go for like a regular sound monitor. The one we went for was the Vitek Safe and Sound. Again, we bought this on Facebook Marketplace and it was 10 pounds. The range on this is crazy. We tested it out um, as soon as we got it and Tony was in the bedroom, way on the other side from the baby monitor, just whispering and I could hear him so clearly in the kitchen. So I'm actually really impressed with the sound range on this and the sound quality. We kind of thought that a lot of people um, got by with just a sound monitor before all these snazzy video ones and we probably will as well. Um, of course, if we use this and we decide that we really desperately want to have video, then we'll go and buy one. Moving on to the next topic, transportation. So obviously we need to get the baby around and we went to look at quite a few different prams. In the end, we decided to go for the doona. I've posted a full unboxing video, which I will link up here. So if you want to check that out, please do. Um, the doona is basically a car seat and it has wheels which flip down. So if you are out and about, you can easily just take out the car, fit the wheels down and be on your way. Another thing we bought to carry the baby around was this Ergo Baby baby carrier. So this is the Embrace carrier. And we bought this when we went to the baby show. We weren't actually planning on buying this, I'm not gonna lie, we went to the sand and I got sucked in. She helped me put it on and showed me how to use it and I just thought, you know what, like, I actually probably think I could manage this. I like the look of it, it's really soft and lovely. It's also got a way that you can roll it up so you can put a newborn in there at the beginning and then you can roll it down when they're a bit bigger. This was pricey though, this was, I think, I'm pretty sure this was £79, so it wasn't cheap. Um, it does feel really good quality though and I'm happy I bought it, we'll see how it goes. We did look at prams and I think if we do need to buy a pram, we can just order one online. There was a few that we quite liked, um, I really like the Baby Zen Yo-Yo because we live in London and it's like a nice lightweight option. We also looked at the Upper Baby Vista and the Oyster 3, so those were the three prams that we were kind of umming and ahhing about and yeah if we find that we can't get on with the doona and the baby carrier then we will just order a pram. Lastly I'm going to talk about a few feeding bits that we got. So there were two big ticket items in our feeding category and one of those was the Tommy Tippy Perfect Prep Machine. This is something again loads of people recommended to us. Um, I am planning on breastfeeding but obviously I don't know how that's going to go and if we do need to use formula then I think we'll be really glad to have this. It's basically a machine which just preps the bottle for you so you don't really have to do anything. I think you just like put formula in, put milk in and voila, out comes a ready bottle. Again, that's something you can buy secondhand. We bought that new just because of the lockdown and we um, had left it a bit late. So we ended up just buying a new one online. Lastly in the feeding department is my breast pump. So I was very, very, very lucky to be gifted the LV breast pump from my sister-in-law. She used this when she had her baby and then she actually had some problems with it. So, sorry, I've just got so many bits of it, like literally. This is my bag. 
full of breast pump stuff and there's like all of these bits which go with it and I haven't figured out how to use it yet I'm not gonna lie but I just kind of threw it together to show you that that is what it looks like it's a portable breast pump and it is wireless as well which is quite cool I think you can track it all on your app so she actually had a few problems with these and this is not cheap both of these together are probably around 450 quid so um, it is not a cheap breast pump solution by any means um, and the fact that they broke on her isn't great um, so these two hubs are actually both broken I've got replacements in the bag which LV have sent out to us and I need to try them out she also had problems with the suction cups which are these things um, so they've sent her new ones of those as well um, I basically need to put it all together and see if these new ones work which I really hope that they do yeah I've heard really mixed reviews about this um, loads of people rave about it for sure like there's definitely um a lot of hype around this product but um some of the negatives i've heard is that it does leak quite easily so if you bend over or if you're moving around um the milk can leak out of these i've also heard that the suction isn't great so um you can get mastitis and things like that because it's not sucking out all of the milk from your boobs so I don't know I'm gonna try it out and see how it goes I I'm still excited to use it just because there is so much hype around the product and I feel very very lucky to be um, given them by my sister-in-law so thank you very much Mansi. very very much appreciated I think I'll try and do reviews of quite a few of these products um, especially the Duna the LV and the um, Ergo Baby I probably will do a review of but if there's anything else you want to see, then let me know. So yeah, those are all of our big ticket, big baby buy items. I hope you found this video interesting and it was a little bit helpful. It is an absolute minefield shopping for baby stuff. If you're going through that at the moment, then let me know what your big buys have been down below and let me know if there's anything else you think I need to buy. I mean, some people might find this haul completely excessive, but I think that we've kind of got what we need and if we need more, um, then we can just go online and order it um, and I kind of want to see what the baby likes and what he doesn't like and if there's anything else that we think he would really benefit from then we'll buy it but at this point I think we're good but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe let me know if you're pregnant and you're watching this I would love to hear how you're doing but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time thanks bye